Hi everyone, it's Wednesday Warriors and it's me, Ariel. And this week, I want to talk about perfectionism. Specifically, perfectionism as an obstacle to recovery. I have done videos in the past about being a perfectionist, about perfectionism, things that go along with that, how we can kind of break out of that perfectionist role. But I want to really focus on how perfectionism is one of four things that can prevent you from achieving a full recovery. And the four things that I'll be talking about are perfectionism, people-pleasing, stigmas, and defensiveness. And even though some of these things I've talked about in past videos over the years, I want to talk about how they all prevent us from achieving a full recovery. These four things are very hard to conquer, and that's part of the reason why I want to bring special attention to them today. So this week, I'm going to be talking about perfectionism, and then the second week of this rotation, I'll be talking about people-pleasing. The third week, I'll be talking about stigmas, and the last week, I'll be talking about defensiveness. Perfectionism is a very hard thing to break because you can sort of think about being a perfectionist as being a good thing or at least not a bad thing. When someone is a perfectionist, they usually want to achieve the best results. They usually want to do their best, put their best foot forward. But the problem is that with perfectionism, we are striving for something that isn't really attainable because perfection doesn't actually exist. And what we do instead is we set ourselves up for failure because since our goal is unreachable, we're never ever going to meet our goal. And that's sort of what keeps us in this place of always trying to strive harder and do better and, and work harder. And even though striving harder and working towards something are excellent, they can in a sense hold us back when the goal isn't realistic. So many people, eating disordered or not, are just so engrossed with the topic of perfection and then imperfection. And it really can become an obsession. It can rule our lives. And it doesn't matter if it's body image related or beauty related or achievement related, whether it has to do with food or just aspects of everyday life. There are so many spots that we can become obsessed about where flaws are concerned, because that's what it really comes down to. It doesn't have to be a flaw about our physical self, but it can be a flaw about things we do or the way in which we live our lives. And it's a really unfortunate thing that people become obsessed with this because it takes away from living your life. Being a perfectionist takes away from living your life. Not only does everyone have imperfections, but everyone has problems issues, things that they have to deal with, insecurities. And if you feel that you are the only one, that's where you'll run into that fear of being imperfect. And I know I felt that fear on a number of occasions. I felt that fear a lot in regards to different things, things that I'm not good at, things that I wish I was better at, or things that I'm afraid of. And you can learn to embrace your imperfections if you don't think of them as imperfections. Imperfections sounds like a really ugly word because we've been conditioned to think, oh, imperfections, that's not good. And sometimes just stereotypes or stigmas surrounding certain words or feelings can really change our perception about it. So how do you come to terms with not being perfect? It can take a really long time. I know I'm still working on it. And it isn't even that I want to be perfect. I don't wake up every morning with a goal of, I need to be perfect today. It doesn't happen in a way that's concrete where I'm striving for perfectionism because I know by now with the work that I do that perfection doesn't really exist. But at the same time, it still is hard some of the time to come to terms with not being perfect. And I think all of us deal with this at some time or another, but people who are perfectionists deal with this a lot, and it will hold you back from achieving a full recovery. Letting go of the having to be perfect attitude will really, really benefit you, but you have to stick with it because the question at the heart of everything is how do I come to terms with not being perfect? That's where any tricks 
or methods I could teach you would come in. And the only way to not be overwhelmed by perfectionism is to accept our imperfections and realize fully that no one is perfect. No one. And our imperfections don't have to be something negative. They don't have to be something wrong. They can just be. They can exist. And we all have them. As I said at the beginning of this video, perfection isn't achievable. So essentially, you're setting yourself up for failure from the get-go, if that's your goal. So you need to reframe your goal. You need to pick a new goal, turn it into something different. And you need to let go of that whole perfection thing. Perfection is a fallacy. You have to learn to accept your own imperfections as normal, because they are normal. And I will tell you why. No matter how alone you might feel about a certain flaw or imperfection that you have, you're not alone. Because think how lonely having an eating disorder is. And think how alone you felt at certain points throughout your struggle. Or even how alone you still feel sometimes. But are you alone? And I know that you can think about that question and say, oh no, of course I'm not alone. You know, how many thousands, millions of people have an eating disorder? Um, but at the same time, just to make it a little bit more tangible and real, I'm making this video for a recovery collaboration that has thousands of subscribers and even more viewers. And if you're watching this, you are among hundreds and thousands of people who visit who are dealing with very similar issues and struggles. And that's just one tiny microcosm of this whole world. There are a lot of people with eating disorders out there. And even though at one time or another you might feel alone because you have one, you know that you're not. And you have to remind yourself of that. It takes practice. You are not alone. You might feel alone, but you are not alone. So then, you put the same strategy towards perfectionism. You use logic. Whatever your imperfection might be, today, tomorrow, five minutes from now, and I'm sure you'll come up with many different imperfections or flaws or things that you don't like or wish you could work on. Whether it's about a body part being too big or too small or too this or too that, someone else out there, and most likely many, many other people, have that same imperfection. And to be quite honest with you, Who's to say it's an imperfection? Especially if a lot of people have it. Maybe it's much more normal than it is imperfect. And maybe by some major miracle, you are in fact the only person who has that particular imperfection. Isn't that more special? Doesn't that make you more complex and more unique? And I know that not all imperfections have something to do with the body or the way that you look. I know I have insecurities in regards to driving because I don't think I'm a very good driver and even though I drive a lot on a daily basis, I get very nervous when I drive, makes me anxious and I don't have a good sense of direction. So I get very concerned about how I am in relation to other people who are better drivers have a better sense of direction. I get very nervous about what people will think of me if I get lost getting to a particular place, whether it's for my job or for a friend or for a, an event or a function. And it is an imperfection that I have that I'm not good at driving and I don't like it and it makes me nervous and afraid. But I try to ground myself by remembering that I'm not the only person who hates driving. I'm not the only person who gets nervous about driving or who becomes anxious or worries about what other people think. And sometimes it's not about lying to yourself and standing there and saying, you're a great driver because look, I'm not a great driver. It's more about saying sternly to yourself, I'm not perfect but I'm fine just the way I am. And that's what I have to remember to say. I'm not perfect, but I'm okay just the way I am. It's okay that I'm not good at everything. And the role of perfectionism in eating disorders can be huge, but you can accept and grow, and soon your imperfections won't seem like a bad thing anymore. I hope you have a great week, everyone. I'll see you next time.